All right, if you are someone who likes to guess and check, if that's a great strategy for you, then you are going to love today's lesson. We're going to be focusing on factoring trinomials, but just starting with the basic type, the type x squared plus bx plus c. So before we get started with actually factoring, I want you to do a little bit of exploring. I'm going to give you pairs of binomials, and I want you to multiply them. And then I really want you to look for a pattern and see, hey, what's happening? How does the product relate to the original terms? So, all right, here are four examples, and I want you to try them. So I'm going to have you do x plus 4 times x plus 5, x minus 2 times x minus 3, x plus 8 times x minus 2, and the quantity x minus 7 times x plus 4. Okay, so I will um, write down what I'm getting for my final answer, and I want to see if you notice anything. Okay, so this first one I got x squared plus 9x plus 20, and hopefully that's what you got too. If you didn't do these already, make sure you're pausing and do them on your own. Okay, the next one I get x squared minus 5x plus 6. The next one I'm getting x squared plus 6x minus 16. And then the last one I'm getting x squared minus 3x minus 28. Okay, I'm really hoping that you can see something that's going on here. When you look, okay, because we just have x and x at the beginning of each of these, all of our final products just start with x squared. What I want you to try to see is how does this number relate to these numbers? Okay, so every time this number relates somehow to those numbers. This number relates somehow to those numbers. This number relates somehow to those numbers. Okay, I hope you have a thought, you have a guess what it is, what's happening with those two numbers to get that middle term. Okay, now this number also relates somehow to these numbers. And this relates somehow here. This relates and this relates. Okay, so I'm hoping you'll notice something there too. All right, so if you realize this, then you got it right. If the answer is written x squared plus bx plus c, then b, so that middle term, the red one that I circled, is the sum of the numbers. So like 9 is the same thing as 4 plus 5. Negative 5 is the same thing as negative 2 plus negative 3. 6 is the same thing as 8 plus negative 2, okay? So they all are the sum of those two numbers. And C, okay, this black circled one, is the product. So it's when you multiply them together. So 4 times 5, negative 2 times negative 3, 8 times negative 2, negative 7 times 4. So that's the product there. When we factor trinomials, we, we're going to take some terms that look like this, trinomials, and we're going to try to factor them and see what two binomials did we multiply to get it. Okay, so that's going to be our goal today. So to factor the trinomial in that form, x squared plus bx plus c, you need to find two numbers that have a sum of b and a product of c. So you're looking for two numbers that add up to that number b, and they multiply to give you c. Okay, so let's start and look at a couple examples and see what you're trying to do. All right, so if I ask you to factor each expression, and you're doing this, x squared plus 8x plus 15, you're trying to factor that. What you are looking is you're looking for two numbers that sum to 8, so they have to add up to 8, and they multiply to get you 15. Okay? So you should, I hope, be able to come up with that pretty quickly. Um, and by the way, it is usually much easier to start with the numbers that multiply to give you something than the ones that add, because adding you just have way too many possibilities, especially when you start getting into the negatives, and multiplying is usually easier. So you're looking at numbers that multiply to 15 first. So you might check out 15 and 1, or you might check out 5 and 3, and you really don't have any other pairs except for negatives, okay? Um, which may happen, but not in this case. Um, so then you're looking at those pairs and you're saying, which one sums to 8? Well, 5 plus 3, that adds up to 8, so that's good. That's what I want. So when you're finding those numbers as 5 and 3, in our 
two binomials that we're multiplying together, it should be x plus 5 times x plus 3. We can check that here by saying x times x is x squared plus 3x plus 5x plus 15. That does equal x squared plus 8x plus 15, so I did it correctly. This is my final answer. The quantity x plus 5 times the quantity x plus 3. And you're definitely allowed to put that in um, x plus 3 times x plus 5. That's fine. Okay, I want you to try this one on your own if you can. Okay, so this time I'm looking at c squared minus 9c plus 20. So this time I'm looking at numbers that multiply to get 20. And they add to get negative 9. So there's that minus sign in front. I want them to add up to get negative 9. Oh, so try that on your own and see if you can write it start to finish. Okay. But I hope you notice that it's going to have to be a negative times a negative to get a positive answer, but to have a negative sum. So it's, you know, 4 and 5 or negative 4 and negative 5 are the first two things I think of. Okay. And so I'm going to get, this time it's not x, so it's a c. So I think it's c minus 4 times c minus 5. And I, it's very smart to check that if you're not confident. You can check it with me today. c minus 4 times c minus 5, either order. All right, let's try three more. Um, you can try these all without me. They get a little bit more complex as we go through. Um, but we'll see how you do. Okay. So if I'm trying this first one, I'm looking for numbers that multiply to negative 48. So they multiply to that. And they add up to 13. So the first thing I'm going to notice has to be a negative times a positive. The positive number is going to be bigger because it's adding up to a positive answer. So I'm going to have to play around with some of the factors of 48. I mean, I might automatically want to try like 12 and 4. By the way, I usually ignore the signs altogether and just play with positives at first and then see if I can get them to add or subtract to the right number, but that's just a personal preference. Um, 12 and 4, if I add them, that's 16. If I subtract them, that's 8. It's not going to work. If I try 16 times 3, that seems good because 16 minus 3 is 13. So if one of these two numbers is negative, then like 16 plus negative 3 would be positive 13, so that seems good. So I'm going to use the number 16 and negative 3. So I think this would be x plus 16 times x minus 3. But this was kind of harder, so I want to check it out and see, see if I can get it. So if I multiply here, I get x squared minus 3x plus 16x minus 48. All right. Add those like terms in the middle. I got x squared plus 13x minus 48. That's what I wanted. So that seems great. All right. The next one here, let's look again. So I want numbers that multiply to 24, actually negative 24, and add up to negative 5. So I'm looking, playing around with that. Um, so, I mean, 12 and 2 is not going to work. 1 and 24, 4 and 6 is not going to work. If I try 3 and 8... That seems good if the 8 is negative because I want it to add to negative 5. So those seem to be my choices. So this time I think it's going to be n plus 3 times n minus 8. Okay, you can see if you got that right. And then this last one. It's not really worse than the other one, so don't get too scared. Okay. Um, but it looks worse because it has two variables. So this time we're going to factor d squared plus 17dg minus 60g squared. I'm still going to encourage you to just look at the numbers first. You're trying to think of two things that multiply to get you negative 60 and add to get you 17. Okay, the first thing I usually think of is 12 and 5 because that's times 60 and 12 and 5 add up to 17. But I have a problem here. Because I'm multiplying to be a negative number, I need one of those to be negative and one positive. And if one of them is negative, it's going to add up to either negative 7 or positive 7. So I can't use 12 and 5. So I have to go to try something else. I'm going to try 20 and 3. So 20 times 3, that's 60. 
Um, but it has to be negative 60, so I need to make one of them negative. If I make the 3 negative, 20 plus negative 3 is 17, positive 17, so that seems good. So normally I might think it's just D plus 20 and D minus 3, but notice not only is D squared at the end, we have a G squared, so that's going to have to be 20G and 3G, and I think this would be smart to double check because it looks a little harder. So D times D is D squared. D times a negative 3G is a negative 3DG, because alphabetized. 20G times D, that's a positive 20DG. Again, I alphabetized it. And then 20 times 20G times negative 3G is negative 60G squared. Add my like terms. And I get D squared plus 17DG minus 60G squared, which is my original trinomial. So it looks like I factored it correctly and I'm done. Okay, so hopefully you're going to have some fun guessing checking. And with a lot of practice, you will get pretty fast at this.